This isn't just another video about remote work. This is about how a global crisis accidentally created the largest security experiment in history. And five years later, we're still dealing with the fallout. Hey everyone, it's Jerry from Simply Cyber. And today we're diving into something that fundamentally changed our industry, the security implications of a permanently distributed workforce and how we're adapting to this new reality. As a cybersecurity professional who's worked with organizations of all sizes, I've watched this transformation firsthand. And what started as a temporary solution has become a permanent reality that's challenging our traditional security models. Now, let me share some data with you that puts this in perspective. In pre-2020, about 6% of the workforce was acting remote. Today, over 40% of knowledge workers are either fully remote or hybrid. From my experience working with security teams, this shift has exposed fundamental weaknesses in how we approach access control. Let's break this down from a security architecture perspective. Number one, the network perimeter died. Here's what this means in practice. Your security model can no longer assume most workers are inside the corporate network. Every employee's home office, every coffee shop they work from, every hotel they stay at and connect, these are all now part of your network edge. Think about that for a moment. Your network perimeter is literally wherever your employees are. Number two, the attack surface exploded. And this isn't just about more remote connections. We're seeing personal devices accessing corporate resources, home networks with varying security levels, and multiple access points across different time zones and locations. Each of these represents a potential entry point for attackers. To understand where we're heading though, we need to really appreciate how we got here. And the evolution of remote access is actually a quite fascinating journey that mirrors the development of the internet itself. Let's start with the early days. I'm talking about the era of dial-up modems, dedicated hardware, Back then, remote access meant having specialized remote access servers, physical boxes sitting in your data center managing modem connections. And these systems worked, but they were incredibly basic by today's standards. They required dedicated phone lines, so you really had kind of a hard cap on how many people could remote in. There was minimal security. They were painfully slow but they got the job done for the time and they were the best option. Now, remote access technologies began to get developed at this point, including VNC technologies, which is an open source protocol developed at Cambridge University to allow for the transmission of screens being shared as well as remote control. And Real VNC, the sponsor of this video, actually holds the patent for that and invented VNC, which is very much the underpinnings of all remote access. Continuing forward, after this came VPN revolution, and this changed everything, really. VPNs introduced tunneling over the public internet, which meant you could now connect from anywhere with internet access, data was encrypted end to end, companies could retire the expensive dedicated lines, but it also introduced new challenge around client management and network overhead. But don't worry because the next shift came and that was cloud-based remote access. This was a game changer because no more managing VPN infrastructure needs were in place. Access became browser-based, so it was very easy to do. Management moved to the cloud and scaling became infinitely easier, but it also meant we needed to rethink our security models completely. So let's look at how modern solutions are addressing these challenges. And I'll use Real VNC's latest release, Connect V8, as our example. But these principles will apply broadly to enterprise remote access solutions. And shout out to Real VNC for sponsoring this video. First, let's talk about the unified application interface. And this is crucial because it addresses one of the biggest pain points in remote access management, and that is fragmentation. When you're managing hundreds or thousands of remote connections, having everything in one place isn't just convenient, it's essential for security and timeliness. In addition, real VNC's case, VNC connections previously had a viewer installed on one side and a server installed on the other. And with V8, both the viewer and the server are in one unified app, making things much easier for management and execution. Now let's dive into some advanced security features. The two minute code refresh system is particularly interesting and here's how it works. Access codes automatically regenerate every two minutes and previous codes become invalid. 
Each session gets a unique identifier and all of this happens seamlessly in the background. And this might seem like a small feature, right? But it actually is a powerful security feature because it significantly reduces the window of opportunity for credential theft and replay attacks. Additionally, whether you're using remote access internally for your support team or you're an MSP and accessing clients, you have granular control over user permissions, access, and have IAM integrations like Okta or AD to ensure access control is properly managed both you know, by the staff who's doing it as well as what systems you're hopping into. Let's talk about practical device management. And one feature that stands out to me is Code Connect for secure guest access. And here's a real world scenario that'll kind of demonstrate why I think it's so cool. Say your support team needs immediate access to a user's device, right? The user isn't tech savvy enough to configure complex settings and time is critical. So Code Connect solves this by generating a one-time access code that the user can enter to grant immediate access to the box and the sessions automatically logged and recorded and connections terminated after the task completion. And another epic control aspect of remote access is that it enables the end user, the person whose machine is getting hopped on to be involved in the remote connection process from enabling the code connect to providing the code to the technician and the ability to visibly monitor the session itself this is an extra level of security from shenanigans happening from threat actors. Obviously, it's worth pointing out to ensure you have great security awareness for your staff on when these sessions should be enabled and with whom, right? Little GRC mafia love there. Um, don't just let them go ham. You do want to inform them that, you know, it, when it's appropriate and you're making sure that you're talking to an appropriate technician that you do share that. But the point is, it's not just an open listening connection. The user has to be involved with it. And this is really great from a security perspective. Now let's talk about best practices for secure remote access deployment. Based on my experience working with enterprise security teams, there's several elements that you need to get right. First, let's talk about risk assessment right, GRC, before you deploy any remote access solution, you do need to map your critical assets and data flows, identify your access patterns, and understand compliance requirements, right? Document your security controls, and you might be like, oh, I don't have time for that. Well, guess what? It's not just bureaucratic paperwork. It's crucial if you plan on building a secure remote access strategy and having the organization aligned to it. Security policy development is next, and here's what makes an effective remote access policy. It needs to address access approval processes, authentication requirements, device security standards, monitoring and audit requirements, and incident response procedures if something goes wrong. The key is making these policies robust, but also practical, okay? Too strict and the users will find workarounds, believe that. Too loose and you're leaving yourself vulnerable. What's the point, right? Another consideration that can help you be more secure is ensuring your remote access solutions are making efforts to be technically secure and you can get some level of confidence from independent certifications. For example, Real VNC Connect V8 is ISO 27001 and NIS2 certified. So look for those type of independent uh, verifications. Maybe the software has been pen tested. Ask for these things uh, to help give you a level of confidence and assurance that they're developed securely as well. Let's look at access control strategies, right? Modern solutions like Connect V8 provides granular controls that let you implement role-based access controls, set up time-based restrictions, define device-based policies, configure location-based rules. So like you don't have anyone working in Cambodia. So maybe you shouldn't have anyone remoting in from Cambodia, right? And my favorite part, requiring multi-factor authentication for users to access anything. But here is what many organizations miss. You need to regularly review and update these controls. Access requirements change. People change roles, projects end. Technology goes end of life. Dude, it's not a set it and forget it. It is a life cycle that needs to be constantly touched. As we look to the future of remote access security, several trends are emerging that you need to be aware of. First, we're seeing the integration of artificial intelligence and machine learning in access decisions. And this means that behavior analysis of user actions is involved. Anomaly detection can happen in real time. 
predictive security measures can be put in place and automated response to threats can execute, right? And these aren't just buzzwords that you're hearing. It's not the next gen or the single pane of glass. These are becoming actually essential tools for managing remote access at scale, right? If you have tens of thousands of remote access situations going on, that's not practical for a human to do all by themselves. You need a little bit of help. Zero Trust Architect is also evolving, right? And we're moving towards continuous verification of every access request, right? Context-aware security policies, dynamic access controls that can change based on different criteria or variables, and integration with identity and access management platforms, which I'm a huge fan of. The goal is to make security both stronger and more transparent to end users. So let's bring this all together. The shift to remote work has fundamentally changed how we need to think about access security and whether you're using real VNCs, Connect V8 or another solution, remember these key points. Remote access security is no longer optional. It's a core business requirement. The right solution needs to balance security with usability. Regular assessment and updates of your security policies are crucial. Monitoring and audit capabilities are as important as access controls. The future is about intelligent, adaptive security measures. But more importantly, remember, security isn't a destination, it's a journey. And as threats evolve, so must our security practices. The good news is that with the right tools and practices, Secure remote access is absolutely achievable. We've come a long way from the days of dial-up modems and basic VPNs, but today's solutions give us the ability to work securely from anywhere while maintaining control and visibility that we need. If you're managing remote access for your organization, I hope this overview and introduction has given you some valuable insights and practical steps that you can take to work with you tomorrow or as soon as this video ends to actually enhance your security posture and level up your game. Now, if you found it helpful, make sure to like and subscribe to Simply Cyber as always for all the cybersecurity insights and drop a comment below if you got any thoughts about the future of remote access. I love engaging with people in the comments. Again, thanks to Real VNC for making this deep dive possible by sponsoring the video. And you can check out the description for all the additional resources and links below, including the Real VNC's Connect V8 platform. I'm Jerry, and I'll see you in the next video.